Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 1. <clears throat> Picking up where we left off. I don't know how much of a break this is. I, I thank God we have the chapter numbers. I mean, they are a blessing. Inspiration? I don't know. I mean, some of the chapters just really speak out with God and the Holy Spirit. But it's still continuing. We have left Ezekiel. You're going to lay on your right side, and you're going to lay on your left side. Take this tile and, and a little army men. And then you're going to get this vegetable concoction of grains as your meal. And you're only going to get a certain amount a day, time to time. You're going to get a certain amount of water a day from time to time by measure. And, look at verse 5. And, and connects us to verse 4. And remember your conjunction, conjunction. It's, there is no break between chapter 4 and verse 5. Chapter 5. And I say, the, the, the chapter markings and the verse mark, they're next to the most inspiration. Unless you have a modern Bible and you just got crap. You got to have a King James 1611 Bible. Because some of your modern Bibles don't even have the verses, but we'll move on. And thou, son of man, title given to Ezekiel, Daniel once, I believe, once. Daniel had the title, but I think it was once. Jesus Christ, take thee a sharp knife. Take thee a barber's razor. <laughs> Not only a sharp knife, but Pacific. A barber's razor. And they're sharp. And they know how to handle. They've been trained to handle these knives. I've had it. I've had my, my, my beard done with these barber's razors a couple times. Trimming and all that. And it's... And cause it to pass upon thy head. And upon thy beard. Now he doesn't say how much. Doesn't give us. But the head and beard. Then take the balances to weigh and divide the hair. Now God just told Ezekiel you're going to eat your food and drink your water by measure. That's important, because now he's saying, all right, I don't know how much hair, but hair from your head and hair from your beard, I want you to put it on a scale, measuring. And you've seen those scales, where you put the item in one plate and you put the, the weights on the other plate. And thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city. So one third of the hair by measure, not a guesstimation. He says, a divide the hair, so it is exact to measure. It's important. Because God doesn't do anything half, half measure, half cockeyed. There's another word I can use, but I won't. Burn it. You, you ever smell hair burning? One of the things I, I smoked from the 1980s to 1990s, oh, 2000. And the one of the, 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 the most ridiculous things ever to do when you're smoking a cigarette is when you like the cigarette and your nose hair catches. Man, that smell. Think about it. It stinks. When the days of the siege are fulfilled, I want to, after, after Babylon's conquered, after Jerusalem's conquered by Babylon, 
does Ezekiel go back into Jerusalem? And thou shalt take a third part and smite it about with a knife. And the third part thou shalt scatter in the wind. And I will draw out a sword after them. So one third of the population, one third of the hair, the population, because this is going to be the Jews, are going to be burned. A third are going to be smitten by a knife, by a sword. And a third part are going to run and get away. And one of the things that happens is when you when you go to Obadiah is Esau, Edom, catches Jews on the run from Nebuchadnezzar's army. Esau captures the Jews and brings them to the Babylonian army. And God rebukes them for they did to their brother. Remember, it goes about, I will curse them that curse you. So there'll be a third that gets away to the, ah, ha, ha, and go, uh, uh, uh. Now this is the hair divided third of the weights. Thou shalt take thereof a few in number without the weights. So when God passes judgment, there is a set number of people who are going to suffer and how they're going to suffer. It doesn't happen haphazardly. And there's a few without a weight. He says, bind them in, who's he speaking to? Speaking in Ezekiel. What sex is Ezekiel? He's a male. And what's he wearing? He's wearing a skirt. And the Baptist said, Well, men shall not wear what pertains to a woman, and a woman shall not pertain what wears to a man, because women are in sin wearing pants. So are you. You're supposed to be wearing a skirt. Well, that's Old Testament. So is what the passage you're quoting. We're not under the law, we're under grace. And when you quote, men not wear what pertains to a woman, and a woman not wear what pertains, that's in the law, buddy. How can you say we're not under the law, and then you quote the law? And then later on, you, you know, everyone open your Bibles to Malachi, and I'm going to show you how you're supposed to tithe. Under the law, when Paul said we're supposed to be given without grudgingly, we're supposed to be given to the Lord wonderfully, cheerfully, not tithing. It's amazing how the Baptists, the Baptists, misinterpret the scriptures for their own proven purpose because Ezekiel is wearing a skirt. Now, listen. One of the, I listen to classical music, and one of the music I listen to is I listen to bagpipes. I dare you to walk up to an army of people who play their bagpipes and have the kilns. I dare you walk up to you, that's not what you're supposed to be wearing, you're not supposed to be wearing that. They take your head off in a moment. I told a pastor one time, I said, I said, you know what? And he didn't like it. I posted it and a pastor didn't like it. I said, men in suits are criminals also. I said, the mafia wears suits. I said, used cars men wear suits and politicians wear suits and preachers wear suits. Well, don't you lump us with, uh, with them? Yeah. So all preachers that wear a suit are, no. thy skirt. So, if you want to be biblical, men, take off your pants and put a skirt on. 
and you want to be proper, oh, 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 the Islam women, they, they, they have the covering over their head, I forget what it's called. So did Sarah, so did Rachel, so did Deborah, so did Mary, so did the women of the Bible, they had the face covering, the, the puka, the puka. What are you going to do with that one? It's a lot better than what some of the church women I see in church where you can see their body parts. I had, a, I had a pastor's wife one time. We were in the church, and she bends over right in front of me, my wife and I. I was like, oh, my God. Really, lady? And let me tell you, my wife and I, first, first thing, that woman needs to wear a bra. That's how bad it was. I'll tell you one thing about the Muslim women. You ain't going to see their boobs. You ain't going to see their butt. You ain't going to see their thighs. Take. Then take. How do we get off on that? We didn't get off on nothing. Then take of them again, the hair, and cast them in the midst of the fire. So there are people who think, hey, I escaped. No, no, no. The sword came after you. I've escaped. No, you're going back in the fire. And burn them with fire. That stinks. For therefore shall the fire come forth into all the house of Israel. That hair is a symbol, is a type, is a sign of Israel. Corn and kind is a symbol of rich and plenty and famine. Birds are a symbol of devils and death. When that, when the, the the baker told Joseph his dream, he said, I, "I got the seven baskets on my head, and there were birds eating off." He died. The moon and the stars and the and the sun represent Jacob, Rachel, and his sons. Jacob said. I mean, Joseph said, I dreamed a dream, and the sun and the moon and the eleven stars did obedience to me. I don't know how Rachel did, because Rachel wasn't there in, in Exodus. But when you look to Jesus Christ and the babies being killed, and Jesus escaped, and it said that Rachel cries for her children. Rachel only had two of the twelve. And then you run over there to Revelation chapter two, 12, where again we're baptized. That's, that's not Israel. Twelve stars, the moon and the sun. That goes back to Joseph's dream. Scripture was strip, scripture. So a Nazarite, like Samson, were not to shave and cut their hair, hair for a period of time to let it grow. Strength. David sends his men to to uh, to an area where the guy's father died. He goes, man, go over there. I want you to comfort him. He's my friend. I, I love him. And to to, to feed and to embarrass the, his army, they they cut half the the hair and half the beard off. Hair is something you have to. You think oh, just hair. It's got something important in the Bible. It says about Aaron when he was anointed that the oil came down through his beard. That Jesus Christ, his beard was plucked and pulled. It's the type of the Jews. It says women are to have the covering of their head in Corinthians. That's the hair. The Bible says men are to have short hair. That's a church doctrine. Is it not a shame for a man to have long hair? Women can't wear 
pants in the church, but there are men with long hair in the church. Yeah, we're delighted to see in church age. Thus saith the Lord God. That's important. God said it. This is Jerusalem, the hair, the people. I have set it in the midst of the nations, the countries that are round about it. So according to God, and that statement there, and there's one other statement in, uh, in the Bible, Jerusalem is the center of all the earth. And there's a period of time in European history, and while history is being rewritten, there was a period of time, and i got to find this note again. I lost it. It's a good note, and I lost it. A stupid thing. I'll, I'll write it down later. Not much, but that's not the point. There was, there was in European maps, to a set point of time, all maps that were drawn, or drew, written. You wouldn't believe, but Jerusalem was the center of all those maps. She shall change my judgments into wickedness more than the nations. The Hittites, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, Israel picked up on their sins, which they were supposed to kill and get rid of the images and the idol. They kept them and gathered more. We'll get into that. And the statues more than the countries that were round about her. God gave them a law. God gave them statues. God gave them a written. This is what? This is the yes. This is the no. This is the yay. This is the nay, this is thou shalt not, and thou shalt. They didn't do it. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. We read that all through Jeremiah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. You know how Jeremiah, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that's not in Ezekiel. Because you multiply more than the nations that are round about you, Hittites, the Pharisees, the Jebusites, and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgment, neither have you done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. You have done what the heathen do. You have not done what I want you to do. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, God, even I am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the name. Why was Jerusalem destroyed? Why was the house of God destroyed? Because of the judgment of sin and iniquity. Why is all this going on today in the world? It's not global warming. It's not because President Biden is the President of the United States. It's not because the votes were stolen against Donald Trump. It's not the hole in the ozone layer. It's not El Nemo. It's El Gato. <laughs> And it is God in his long suffering saying, get right, repent, get right, repent. The axe is going to fall. And you read it in Jeremiah, and you're going to read it in Ezekiel on what's common news today in the world and in America. God is judging us. But like Judah and Israel, nobody's listening. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee. Verse 9, I will do in thee that which I have not done. Long-suffering. Now, God's long-suffering ends. The love of God is gone. Now, the wrath of God. Whereunto I will do 
any more the like because of all thy abominations. Therefore the father shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. Jeremiah 19.9 Scripture with Scripture. I don't like the Old Testament. Scripture with Scripture. I'm going to show you something in a moment. Scripture with Scripture. Jeremiah 19.9 And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. And they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend and the seeds of straightness. Wherein their enemies they shall seek their lives and shall straighten them. Lamentations 2. Lamentations chapter 2. Verse 20. This is past history. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Child of women eat their fruit and children of a span long. That's a woman eating her child. In the times that we are in, in Jeremiah and Ezekiel, you did not want to sit down and have a family meal. Because the family meal could have been your child, or it could have been mom or dad. Dad, you want to slice me an arm of mom? Honey, I'll take the leg of our child today. King Solomon had two women before him in court, and he said, we boiled our child. No, no, that's not the one. It was another king. Ahab, I think. We boiled our, we boiled our, my child, and then we went to go boil her child, and she hid the child. And he went and got mad at uh, Elijah. So, yeah, yeah. But that ain't over yet. Because it just came into my mind, Revelation. Uh-oh. Look at Revelation come. Revelation chapter 12. And I, I want to read the whole thing, but I can't read the whole thing. So, how far? Oh, I, I, I got it. All right, we're, we're in no rush. Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Oh, this scripture was scripture. A woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, Israel. Run back to Joseph's dream. I forget what chapter it is. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. The twelve sons of Jacob. Now why Mary? Why Mary? Why? That's Mary. Catholics say it's Mary. Why the Bible says Rachel when there were four? Why? I don't know. Rachel was the beloved wife. Leah wasn't even supposed to be in the picture. But she, mean with child, cried travailing birth. That travailing birth is, always has a reference to the tribulation. I marked that in my Bible, a tribulation passage. And pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, had seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. And the tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. The third, look at that third. Pay attention to number three. And did cast in earth and, earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. Here's a woman who's going to give birth, and the devil wants to eat that Jewish child. That's going to be a tribulation passage. But go back to Lamentations. Chapter 2. Verse 20. Now Lamentations 2.20 is actual historical fact that Jeremiah is there in Jerusalem and he's watching what's happening. Jeremiah is a reporter on the spot reporting. Oh, be, uh, behold, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Talking to God. Shall the women eat their fruit, a child? That's exactly what the devils did or trying to do. And it's actually happening in Lamentations. So 
the book of Revelation is going to give the Jew eating Jewish babies. That sounds familiar. Like I said, there was a woman that stood before Ahab, and we, we boiled my child, we're, I want to boil her child, she didn't give it to me. Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. And, you know, Christians, I don't like the Old, the Old Testament. Verse 10. So the fathers shall eat the sons of the mystery, and the sons shall eat the fathers. We read the mothers are eating their babies. That's a family meal. Come on down to our restaurant and the whole family could eat. That's scripture. That is scripture. And they don't even know it. And the son shall eat the fathers. I will execute judgment in thee. The cannibalism of eating your family to survive is a judgment of God. And I guarantee somewhere in America it's being done. The media ain't going to tell you. They rather right tell you about some woman that, you know, disappeared. That ain't new. I mean, I'm sorry for the family and all that, but that's not national news. Why don't you put current up-to-date events that are in the Bible that's going on today? Because it would show you and point to you to the Bible. I guarantee there are places in the world today that a woman has given birth to her baby and she ate it to survive. And she's probably got tons of thousands of gods. This happens in, in, they kill their babies in India. They throw their babies on these elephant gods. I've talked to missionaries in India. I will execute judgments in the, well, what do you think? What do you think God's going to do? Why is India in complete depression? Why are they complete, you know, you got to send money to feed the children when hamburgers are walking around. Because those hamburgers are gods. You can't kill that god because it may be grandma. All right, starve to death. Let Satan starve you to death. Well, what do you think is going to happen in America when we kill our babies? Have you checked the grocery store shelves? Have you checked how many people are working for restaurants? Have you noticed? We're coming to a food shortage. I hope I'm gone by then. You know, I don't have any grandchildren, and the way things are going to be, I'll leave it just like that. I'll be happy not to have any grandchildren to know what the future of this world is. Oh, I wouldn't eat my child. You don't know what you would do when you're starving to death. Told you that that airplane crash that happened when I was a baby. I mean, when I was a child, I was a baby. And the survivors of that plane crash survived because they were eating the passengers that died. I just told you the other day. I read about a mother that was abandoned out to sea in a boat or on an island, and she survived only by drinking her own urine and eventually died. And she had that will because she had two or three daughters. Darwin taught the survival of the fittest. When America ain't got no food and the world ain't got no food, we'll pull our guns out and shoot you and eat you. It's going to happen. And if you don't eat, there'll be a person called the Antichrist and he'll be out for the dinette of Jewish people in a literal Jew, Jewish Christian Catholic mass. Where you eat the body and blood of Jewish children. Revelation chapter 12. This is all scripture. You don't need a Hollywood horror movie. <laughs> Just open up the page of your Bible. And this is why I don't want grandchildren. America is it's failing. Listen, there are... Alright, I don't think we're going to finish this chapter. There are people in America, I just read the other day, 
A, my daughter is a nurse, studying to be a nurse CNA. I just read the other day a nurse was multiple punch, multiple times was punched in her face by a husband of a wife that they, while that woman was in the hospital, they gave her the, the vaccine. And the husband punched the nurse in the face multiple times. There are people who are getting shot and killed all over the world. There was one in, in Germany in the gas station. Put that mask on. Bang! And kills him. Don't you tell me I'm not going to wear a mask. There have been fist fights at restaurants. Put a mask on. If they'll kill you because they don't want to wear a mask, if they'll kill you because they want you to wear a mask, or don't want you to wear a mask, what do you think they're going to do when there's no food? And America's heading to no food. God bless America. Open up your eyes. You cannot get the God of the Bible to bless this nation with a Catholic God, with an atheist God, with an agnostic God, with a Mormon God, with a Jehovah Witness God that's not Jesus, with a, a Mary Baker Eddy God, with an Islam God, with a yoga God, with a Native American God, with a Mexican God, with an India God, with a Russian God, with a United Nations. God, with the Save the Whale God, with the Green Earth God, with El Nemo God, with the Ozone God, with the Outer Space and Mars God, with the Planetary God, with the Astronomy in the Newspaper God, and the Actors God, and the Actresses God, and Ofer Winthry God, and the View God, and the Wicca God, and me, myself, and I God, you're not going to get God bless America. And when you waste food, and you throw food out, and you make watermelon and pumpkin guns, and your television program, and they sit there and waste food stupidly, and then they cry, there's poverty, there's people going to bed hungry. Sorry. God is not going to bless America soon, and it'll end soon. And with the crap that's in the churches, their perversion Bible, their perversion teaching, and the love. Everybody come to my church. How great my church is. We'll skip Jeremiah 10. We'll fastly go over the, the conclusion of Revelation chapter 3. We'll teach you that Hebrews is for the Christian. James, written to the 12 tribes scattered on the board, is for the Christian. We'll take out the fact is that the Ethiopian eunuch says, My Lord, my God, Jesus. We don't even know what dill is. Pick that study up from the other night. That religions, all religions, including the Catholic Church, denies Genesis 1-1 and believes in evolution. There are religions that have open, gay, lesbian, transsexual leadership. Not just... Not just the, the, the office behind their pulpits and their podium, but they also have them now in their leadership. God ain't going to bless that. If God blesses that, he's going to have to call, all right, call up everyone from Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighborhood and say, come on, guys, i got to apologize to you all. Mrs. Lot, I, I am so sorry. God ain't going to do that. Jeremiah and Ezekiel is about a nation that has sin and iniquity against God, and they are God's people. God loves them, and he destroys. And if God destroys Judah, and it happened, and if God destroyed Israel, and it happened, you better believe he will destroy those who don't love him, and he don't love them, but God is love. It's what we're learning about right now. 
poor Ezekiel suffers, and he's going to suffer. We're going to read of his suffering for a people who won't listen to him. That's the one thing I don't like about God. I'm going to be perfectly honest, and I tell God, so think how some people suffer for others, and the others don't get it. We're going to see that in Ezekiel. Verse 10, Therefore the Father shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat the fathers, and I will execute judgments in thee. Is that enough of a judgment? And the whole raiment of thee will I scatter unto the wind. So while they're being burned, while they're being under the knife, they're under the knife, wait a minute, go back, go back to verse 2, and smite about with the knife. You see that? You see that? Run that up to verse 9 and 10. Under the knife is they're cutting you with a knife to eat you. Shall dad carve the turkey this year? No, no. Dad carved our son. Come on. That's what's going on. That's the Bible. Verse 11, wherefore as I live, that's God's eternal. The eternal God says, as I live. You know, the cities of refuge were, how you doing? Uh, uh, my name is Joseph, yeah. I accidentally killed Ahab. And we were out cutting wood and I cut, and the tree fell on him. We didn't know it was going that direction. All right, they have a little trial. All right. It was manslaughter. It was not murder. It was not intended. Come into our city. You stay in our city till the high priest dies. I don't ever wanted that guy. I wish that guy just dropped dead. Come on. I'm a, but when that high, hey, guess what? The high priest died. Oh, that guy be, all right, I get to go home. As I lived, and that's forever. I used to tell men in the prison, all right. You're in hell. You're burning. You're in torment. And you can get out when the clock on the wall says midnight. But the problem is that clock on the wall has no hands. And I saw the mouth drop. As I live, saith the Lord God. God never dies. Yet God died on the tree. But he didn't die forever. Three days and three nights he came up. As a, Surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary. That's the house. That's the Lord's house. I'll tell you right now. You know, welcome to the Lord's house. We're having such a great. Prayer. You know, okay, if that's the Lord's house, the church today, it's been defiled. Okay? With all thy detestable things. With all thine abominations. What is it? Jeremiah told us that. Jeremiah said they were hope, they were worshiping the host of heaven in the temple. They were worshiping Baal. They were worshiping Balaam. They were worshiping Astrid. They had an altar on every city street. Like in America, every city street you got a church. And in that church, even the Baptist church, you got an altar. I don't know if Jehovah's Witnesses have an altar. But they do have their God, the, the, the tower, the watchtower. America is no different from Jerusalem. And you go from city to city, street to street, and you'll find some kind of altar to some kind of God. And even the Baptist, you know how many different variations of Baptist there are? We got a new Baptist organization now. It's called the Republican Donald Trump Baptist Church. Someone put a billboard in Georgia. Donald Trump, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Blasphemy. My Jesus Christ didn't divorce three times. My Jesus Christ paid his bills. Didn't bankrupt his businesses six times. Jesus Christ turned over his tax records to pay his taxes. Therefore will I diminish thee 
Neither shall my eyes fear, neither will I have any pity. <laughs> there were very few, including Jeremiah, that survived. A third part of the, all right, this is going to be the explanation of verse 2. They shall die with the pestilence, with the famine. So strong, you're going to eat your children. Shall they be consumed in the midst of thee? They're going to drop dead in the city. A third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. The Babylonian army, the Chaldean, and then the Edomites. I will scatter a third part into all the winds. They run towards Edom. They get caught. They run to Egypt. Jonathan went, went to Egypt and they died. Except for Jeremiah and Baruch, they died by the Babylonian army. Remember that we read? Jeremiah put those things, those, those stones there, and, and, and Nebuchadnezzar is going to come, he's going to kill him. There you go. Jeremiah and Ezekiel work together, and they are in two different places. Yeah, men wrote the Bible. Jeremiah and Ezekiel did not have a cell phone. Thus shall my anger be accomplished when he destroys them. When we get to lamentations, it's got, okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm not angry no more. But they're still suffering. I will cause my fury to rest upon them. I will be comforted. God be comforted at their judgment. That's how much God hates sin. Don't you tell me God hates the sin and loves the sinner. How do you explain this? Someone's lying. It ain't God. They shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it with my seal. It, it spoken it in my seal. How do they know God spoke it? Jeremiah did. He's talking about what everything Jeremiah said and everything Ezekiel said and everything Isaiah said. Some of these, some of these Christian Baptists today, they're going to hear one day. Listen, I sent Stiley in there and he spoke the truth. Why didn't you listen to him? Oh, we didn't like him, and, uh, and, he, and he kicked, and he and he poked, and he stabbed, and and the greater things in life and health, sometimes it caused pain. Needles hurt when they got to put the, when they got to just take a dislocated bone and put it back. It hurts when a woman gives birth. It hurts. Christians don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt. Life hurts. The Lord will hurt chastening because he loves us. More I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nation that are round about thee sight of all that pass by. God's serious. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt and instruction in astonishment unto the nation. Don't you dare do what my people did. Chastening is supposed to be for correction. It tells your brothers and sisters, I better not do that because dad will give me the same thing that brother or sister. Next time, I am going to go up to mom and say, mom, can I please have a cookie? I'm not going to do what brother did. Because where that cookie came out, Dad had a field day on that tiny. Astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. Philistine, Edomite, Moabites, Tyre. <laughs> Correction is supposed to be for others to see. Don't do that. When a Christian in, a, in his church is being chastened by God, the Christians around are supposed to be, oh. 
Okay. Mark that off my list not to do. But how are you going to learn the church today when everything's hunky, dory, wonderful, and great? God loves us all. We don't need to repent. There's no sin. There's no hell. And they sang and danced and had orgies at the golden calf of Aaron. And that golden calf was so good years and years and years and later, Jeroboam says, I'll make two of them. In the Catholic Church, when the Pope speaks officially, it's called bull. Yes, it is. I, I put another word after that too, but I can't say that word. Bull crap. But that's a clean version. You know, it's amazing. Why did they call it a bull? Why was it two golden calves? Why is it was a golden calf? Why is it the golden arches? Why is it, you know, the beef steak? Why is it the steak? Why is, you know, the long horn, the long horn steak in house? And what is it so about the calf? And, you know, and he gets up, he can't spell chicken. And what's wrong? With, what is that? I know a Christian woman, it was so funny in the church, she decorated her whole kitchen in a cow. The black and white spot, everything. The, the pot holders, the, the top, everything. And you can get a computer and it comes in a box and it looks like a cow. You can go to Dow. I mean, oh, shit. No. When I shall execute judgments in the in anger in me, the people, not the sin. And in fury, in furious rebukes, I, the Lord, have spoken it. When God speak, you know, it used to be, what was it? So it was somebody, when somebody speaks, you ought to listen. I forget what that was. When God speaks, you better listen. We had another, there was a commercial, it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. It ain't nice to mess with God. There is no Mother Nature. When I shall send upon them, who is them? All right, let's look at it for a minute. God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine. All right, so... Let, 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 let's put it up to I shall send upon the, the sin the evil arrows of famine. Okay, it ain't going to be the sinners because God loves the sinners. What would it do, God, if he sent arrows upon sin? It don't make sense. How about the sinners that sin? I shall send upon them, I shall send upon sinners, iniquity doers, the evil of, yeah, that fits. So write down, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Write that down and take a match and burn it with fire. And if your pastor says that in the pulpit, you need to get together and say, we need to remove that guy out of the pulpit, or I need to go find a new church. Which shall be for their, for their destruction. Now, who got destroyed, sin or the people? Let's take a sin. Marrying people they shouldn't marry. That's what Israel did. They married the people, the Canaanites. All right, so God passed the judgment. There is no intermarital relation. Boom. So what happened in Nehemiah and Ezra? What were two chapters dedicated to Ezra and Nehemiah when they married outlandish women? That Nehemiah had a whole chapter, named the names, and they said, all right, everyone divorce those women. And <laughs> So you see, the destruction wasn't the intermarriage, because that happened in Babylon. And ain't the rebellion against God in, in the city, because they're rebelling against God with Ezekiel in Babylon. How do you know? 
How many people said Nebuchadnezzar? I'm not bowing down before that golden image. What were the odds? Are you telling me that there were only three Jewish boys? That was it? No, their destruction is the sinners. Again, God hates the sin, loves the sinner. Throw it out, burn it up. Which I will send to destroy you. Aren't you glad God didn't put a ye, thee, or that there? He actually put the word you. Aren't you glad he did that? The old Elizabeth English, it just stinks. All right, God said you. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Got ye. And I will, God will increase the famine upon you. All right, God said it did you again. Those are for the modern people. Too hard to understand the thee and thou's. And then they listen to the music of rap. I don't, you know, you, and, then, and then you listen to rap music. What the heck are they saying? And then you listen to hard rock. What are they saying? I don't know what they're saying. Can't read that Bible. You can't understand what it says in the Bible. It's Christian music today. What are they saying? Who was a Christian singer? I don't know what she was saying. I had no idea what her words are. But she would get, well, you know, the these and I can't understand. I couldn't understand you, lady. I will break your staff of bread. Can you run that back to Jeremiah? You remember that? Give Jeremiah the bread from the street as long as there's any bread left. Do you see parallel Ezekiel and Jeremiah running? Scripture is scripture. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts. Oh. Does that not describe today us? You know, there's a lot of sharks out there biting people. There's a lot of animal attacks. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of videos say bears are getting in cars, bears are getting in the swimming pools, deer are running in grocery store, deers are opening up the the, the, the the sliding glass and going inside the house, and there are rapid animals and right. You better open up the Ezekiel. You better open up the King James Bible and put the put the newspaper down. You better put your modern Bibles. I can imagine what your modern Bible says. Evil beasts. You read Revelation? <laughs> we don't. You don't want me to go in Revelation and start reading about the evil beasts. They shall be read thee. And pestilence and blood. Is that not the book of Revelation too? History will repeat itself. Don't you rewrite it. Pestilence and blood shall pass through thee. Uh-oh, God said thee, not you. I don't know what thee means. Uh, I like Shakespeare. No, Shakespeare is very good. <laughs> Shakespeare had a King James Bible. And when he quoted the Bible, he quoted a King James. Uh, I will bring the sword upon thee. God, I don't know what thee means. Run to verse 16. You. <gasps> Ta-da! I love when spell check tries to correct the, when I quote from the Bible. I, the Lord, has spoken. You better be aware, when God speaks it, it's going to happen. I rest assured on what God says and not what man says. 